so exciting to be celebrating Grand Central at 100. I love Grand Central. I mean, it's, it's an institution here in New York and a major landmark in the city. Well, it's looking pretty good, I think, after 100 years, you know, and they built things to last back then. And uh, I'm just amazed at the amount of traffic and use the place gets, and it doesn't show any wear and tear, you know. It's a real classic. At 12.01 a.m., the Boston Express No. 2 was the first train to depart Grand Central Terminal on February 2, 1913. This year marks the landmark building's 100th anniversary. From the beginning, there were so many grand and elegant things about the terminal. The New York Central Railroad's chief engineer, William Wilgus, proposed building Grand Central in 1903 in a three-page letter addressed to the railroad's president. The railroad's owner, Cornelius Vanderbilt, saw its value and financed the terminal's construction, adding to the existing but much smaller Grand Central Depot. The Vanderbilt family crest can be found throughout the main hall. You'll see throughout the terminal the, the acorn, which represents the Vanderbilt family. You have, of course, the magnificent, the very overt art, if you will, from the sculpture on the facade of the terminal on 42nd Street, which includes the Roman or Greek gods, uh, Mercury for one, and art was a part of this grand architecture. It was married in a way, if you will, to the architecture. The art has become just as iconic as the building itself, like the station's signature clock, which alone is estimated to be worth some $20 million, to the ornate, star-filled ceiling. Their concept was to create constellation stars in the ceiling above. Now, when it was actually executed, it was created in reverse. It was often said that it was intentional to present the view from the heavens uh, below. But actually, we believe it was probably a mistake. Over the past decade, Arts for Transit commissioned three contemporary works for the terminal. In the market, in the Grand Central Market, you have Donald Lipsky's Sir Shoshana, which really is, is the word for the inverted yoga handstand. The idea, it's a very large crystal, uh, upside down an olive tree, right in the middle of the market. And it really is, plays off of that, that headstand position of yoga, where the belief that the energy of the cosmos comes through the roots. And so you have the roots and then 5,000 crystals that create a chandelier in the marketplace. And in many ways, they are evoking the original chandeliers in Grand Central. So there is a dialogue, a talk, a discussion between that which is new and that which has been there since 1913. There are also mosaics by Ellen Driscoll in the Grand Central North Passageway and a field of flowers in the waiting room by Roberto Juarez. As you're sitting there, you start to understand that it is as if he's created a field of wildflowers, as if a train too is coming, is passing slowly through. And it captures the movement of transportation, of travel, while also referencing some of the ornamentations such as the acorns that exist throughout the terminal. In 1913, 150,000 people turned out for the opening of Grand Central. And today, 100 years later, more than 700,000 people pass through this terminal every day. I like the lamps, the colors, the clock. It's very amazing because I've seen it like a thousand times in movies and it's a dream to be here. And here in Grand Central, it's like um, one of the best places I can be. For Blue and Art Info, I'm Vanessa Yurkevich at Grand Central Terminal.